Hello. Welcome to today's Math is Everywhere topic of the day. That's right. We got a little background music today. We'll see how it goes. Today we're talking about estimating with irrational numbers. Now that we know what an irrational number is and how it's different from a rational number, how do we actually find out what the value of an irrational number is? First, let's remember what an irrational number is. An irrational number is any number that cannot be written as a fraction. So, there are numbers like the square root of 2, which comes out to some crazy weird decimal, and there's no way of knowing what that decimal is without a calculator. Or, the square root of 37. How do we know what the square root of 37 is? There's no way of knowing unless you have a calculator and you punch it in and you get some crazy irrational number. Remember, irrational numbers have decimals that keep on going on and on forever, but they go on and on and on without the same pattern repeating, so they're really weird. And there's really no way of knowing what those irrational numbers are going to come out to unless you have a calculator. But we can at least make guesses. We can at least kind of try to figure out an estimate of what an irrational number might come out to look like, and that's what we're going to talk about today. What if you had the square root of 10? 10 is not a number that we can square root, because nothing times itself equals 10. There's no matching numbers that you could multiply together that would make 10. Sure, you could do 2 times 5, but 2 and 5 are not matching numbers. So, what is the square root of 10? I don't know. You don't know. So we're going to have to make an estimation on that root, since it's an irrational number. How do we make that estimation? Well, let's try this. An estimation doesn't have to be perfect, so let's compare the square root of 10 to something that's slightly smaller, like the square root of 9, or maybe something that's slightly larger, like the square root of 11. Okay, the problem is, I know what the square root of 9 is, but I don't know what the square root of 11 is, or what the square root of 12 is, or what the square root of 13 is, or 14, or 15, or si oh no, wait, I do know what the square root of 16 is. I know what the square root of 16 is, it's 4, and I know what the square root of 9 is, it's 3. Okay, so where would I put the square root of 10 on the number line? Well, it would have to be between those numbers, wouldn't it? Since the square root of 10 is between the square root of 9 and the square root of 16, I'm going to have to go somewhere between 3 and 4 on the number line. Where? I don't know. Right in the middle? Well, is the square root of 10 right in the middle of the square root of 9 and the square root of 16? Not really. The square root of 10 is much closer to the left, it's much closer to the square root of 9, so I should probably put my dot closer to that answer than to the other answer. So what would be a good estimate for the square root of 10? Well, it would be a number near where that dot is. So I'm not going to say 3 and a half because it's not halfway between the 3 and the 4. I'm going to say maybe approximately 3.1 or you could say approximately 3.2, maybe approximately 3.3. .3. Any of those would be good estimations of what the square root of 10 comes out to. If any of that didn't make sense, take a second to pause this and rewatch what this just said. All right, let's move on, and let me give you kind of the steps that I followed there. Let's say, for example, you're trying to find the square root of 38, and we're going to give it an estimate. The first thing I did was, let's count up until you hit a square root that works. In this case, 38 doesn't have a square root, 39 doesn't have a square root, 40 doesn't have a square root, 41 doesn't have a square root, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, we have to count pretty high until we find a number that has a square root. 48 doesn't have a square root. Okay, 49. We have to count all the way up to 49 before we hit a number that you can square root. But we did that. 
Can we count down from 38? Yeah, 38, 37, 36, and we're done because 36 has a square root. Okay, so square root the high and low numbers. Square root the 36 that we counted down to. Square root the 49 that we counted up to. 36 has a square root of 6. 49 has a square root of 7. And our last step is our estimate should be somewhere between those two numbers. Somewhere between 6 and 7. In this case, again, though, am I going to choose perfectly in half, like 6 and a half? That's between 6 and 7. But... The square root of 38 was a lot closer to the square root of 36 than it was to the square root of 49. So my estimate, okay, should take that into account. Did I count up more or did I count down more? Pick an estimate that's closer to one or the other. In this case, I would say the square root of 38 is closer to the square root of 36, so my answer is going to be closer to 6. Maybe 6.2 or 6.3 or something like that. Okay. Let's just try one more to make sure we really got this down. You don't have to write this one down, just watch and make sure it makes sense. Step one, count up. Does six have a square root? Does seven have a square root? Does eight have a square root? Oh, nine has a square root, that works. Now I'm gonna count down. Oh, I only had to go one, because four has a square root, which is two. Nine has a square root, which is three. And I just have to go somewhere in between. Again, should I go up? No. 5 was closer to 4, so my estimate for the square root of 5 should probably be something like 2.1 or 2.2 or 2.3, okay? But probably not 2.4 because that's pretty close to halfway between them. And 5 is definitely closer to 4 than it is to 9. All right. If you understood all that stuff, great. If you didn't, go back and rewatch it. Or, better yet, Rewatch it and write down some questions that you have. Okay? You and your math journal in your notes for this video are more than welcome to write down questions about things that were confusing to you. So please do. Once you feel like you're ready, try this. Estimate the square root of 24, and then once you get your estimate, put it on the number line. Or put it on the number line first and then tell your estimate. But I want to point on a number line, and I want an estimate. By the way, those wavy equal lines next to the square root of 24 just mean approximately equal to. It's kind of like saying not quite really completely totally equal, but approximately or kind of almost equal to. And that's all I have to say about that, so thanks a lot for watching.